Good morning, uh, postgraduate students. Uh, please, let's get to the fourth lecture in this series in the course Marine Ecology, MSN 831, my own aspect of the course. So I want to discuss in this fourth lecture, Ecology of the Deep Sea Bentos. Ecology of the Deep Sea Bentos. In one of our previous lectures, we've stated that ecology simply means study of the ecosystem. Because the eco there is a short form of ecosystem. And the logi or logos means study of. So ecology is study of ecosystem. Now, but the ecosystem we want to discuss now is the ecosystem of the deep sea. Okay? The deep sea bentos. The deep sea bentos. When we say deep sea, of course, we know that <coughs> it's not, uh, we are not talking of the, uh, we are not talking of a 200 meter depth. We are talking about, of about 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 6,000 depth, and even up to 11,000 in the case of the, of the, of trenches. So we are talking about the real deep sea, the real deep sea. We have also uh, talked about the zonation of this sea, uh, but we can also see this picture to help you know, refresh our memories. We have the, the epipelagic, the mesopelagic, the vertipelagic, the abysopelagic, and the header pelagic on the pelagic on the water column axis. We also have on the benthic axis, of course, the subtidal, the the batio benthic, the abysobenthic, the hedal benthic, and so on. So when we talk about the deep sea, we are talking about the those region of the bottom of the sea that are beyond the continental shelf at least beyond the continental shelf. So we are talking about the region of the Batel Pelagic or Batel Batipenthic, the Abysobenthic, the Hedal Benthic. All right. So there are bentos at this region. That's major thing we need to know about this region. This region is dark, of course, they are aphotic. Okay, they are dark. Uh, they also have distribution of the bentos in a very unique manner. So, talking about the final composition of this region of the deep sea, the benthic final composition of the deep. Of this part of the of the ocean, in that you have few filter feeders or the suspension feeders. The filter or suspension feeders are few. Then you have a lot of deposit feeders, a lot of deposit feeders. Then you have also some predators. So these are the final composition anyway based on their feeding habits okay based on the feeding guild okay now what about the taxonomic diversity it is important to note here that you are likely going to see lots of polychaetes polychaetes are a class of the phylum and the leader, they are the segmented worms. The worms can be segmented, it can be round, it can be flat. The flat ones are the platyhelminthes, the round worms are the nematode or the ascaris. That is, if you're talking about those uh, ones that are endoparasites. Then the segmented one. 
okay the segmented ones are the annelids but there's a class of this annelid that are exclusively marine these are the polychids the polychids so in the atlantic you have um, between 40 and 80 percent of fauna composition comprising of these polychids then you can also have approximately 30 to 50 percent of them being a crustacean especially the isopods and the amphipods then the echinoderms you have large cucumber the large sea cucumbers and then the bretostars the echinoderms echinoderms are the transition organism between the vertebrates and the invertebrates they are the transition organism between the vertebrates and the invertebrates then you have the sponges the porifera okay then you have the cnidarians okay like the sea animals sea pens sea farms then you have fishes okay but the fishes you see here are different from the normal fish you can see in the water column the pelagic or the massa fishes okay fishes like the rat tails the cusk eel eel is a very important benthic fish the or the the, the bite it eats, uh that the brutalus then you have the foraminifera foraminifera are actually uh uh they are actually uh protozoa they are actually protozoa <coughs> and you, you can see a bed of them and uh of course foraminifera in particular forums they call them forums they are some cases indicators of oil deposits so these are some taxonomic diversity that you can see in the deep sea now diversity of the bentos now the bentos here you see many species but each of the species is rare you know each of them is rare each of them is rare now it is also unusual for any one species to be dominant that's, that's a unique feature here and I, I want us to take note of that it's difficult to see a particular species that is more than 10 percent of composition of total abundance so you cannot see some extreme dominance that you can see in the in the in the in the in the littoral the sub littoral zones or even in the intertidal zones okay so species diversity increase with increase in depth so as you increase in depth species diversity remember species diversity no species abundance Species diversity has to do with different types of species, you know, number of different types, okay? Uh, while richness or abundance is the total number, you know, the sum total, you know, irrespective of the uh, which one is dominant or is it evenly distributed or not. Now, the diversity has to include the evenness, so the abundance plus the evenness, so it has to do with how many of different species are found so when you're talking about species diversity as the depth increase the diversity will increase but when you get to the depth of about three three kilometers that's three thousand meters it will start to have a reverse you know uh, proportion it will have to go the reverse way in other words it will start reducing with depth all right now feeding at this level it is important to know that food supply is scarce and patchy now why is it so why is it that you might not see a lot of the tritol you might not experience a lot of the composition because the temperature is becoming lower and the pressure is becoming higher now at this point we are temperature is lower decrease in temperature 
and high pressure bacterial decomposition will reduce to about three times slower so that's why you find uh, food supply or uh, yeah food supply or food abundance decreasing as the depth increase because as the depth increase temperature will reduce and pressure will increase okay now the hydrothermal vent community uh, i'm going to give you and there's going to be a video that you are going to watch you know that will explain more about this hydrothermal vent community what is a vent a vent is you know uh a vent is 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 uh, an environment or an enclosure that oozes out a thing okay like in your laptop you have a vent if you change the vent you see that hot air is always moving out from that vent okay that is a vent now or hydrothermal hydro is water thermal has to do with heat okay so here you have hot water oozing out it's called a hydrothermal vent but there are some communities in this extreme environment in this extremely hot environment you still have large diversity it is something one of the you know one of the uh, surprises of nature so at this hydrothermal vent organisms are adapted to hot water and sulfidic water now the two major features of the hydrothermal vent which i wouldn't want us to forget is that the water is extremely hot okay at least 100 at least above 100 degrees celsius at least above 100 degrees celsius okay and then the water has a lot of sulfur okay now what else what else do you need to know about this community they are chemosynthetic they are chemosynthetic of course at this point there's no oxygen remember it is aphotic because it's aphotic there's no oxygen because there's no oxygen there's no light sorry because there's no because it's aphotic there is no light and because there's no light there's no photosynthesis and because there's no photosynthesis you don't expect to see oxygen you don't expect to see much of produced oxygen okay so but they have to live they have to see how to get the process of respiration because the end product of respiration is to get you energy you know oxidize the glucose and get you energy the energy is what is important here so but they have to go through the process of chemosynthesis they still synthesize food and energy but by the use of some chemicals so they are chemosynthetic remember we discussed earlier chemosynthesis and photosynthesis are all primary production okay so they they are chemosynthetic now another thing you need to know there is that in every vent there are smokes or there are smokers now some of them are called black smokers and some of them are called white smokers i think you need to do some more research on this topic and get more information you are master students you need to be master and uh, and it's not just to pass the exam no 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 no. i'm giving you a lot of videos at the end of the day you might be having up to you might be having up to seven different lecture videos uh but when i'm giving you my exams it might not be more than three four topics but i can't just restrict myself in giving you three four subjects because I, that's where i'm going to give the exams from no I, I need to give i need to be piece of information and uh part of this is what i'm telling you now and you also need to go because i always tell you that information is in the open you can also go, go and get more information read more about black smokers read more about white smokers the black smokers are very very high temperature approximately 400 degrees celsius so and then it is rich in metals and sulfide that precipitate to form particles you know that, that form particle rich black smoker plumes you know 
uh, to form particles that are rich in black, you know, smoke and plumes. So these 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 metals, you know, precipitate to form these black, you know, smokers or black plumes. So that's why they have black smokers. But they also have white smokers. Okay. In contrast, the white smokers they are they have intermediate temperature between 100 and 300. So they have lower temperature compared to the black smokers. And at this temperature of between 100 and 300 degrees Celsius, uh, white particle will precipitate. Okay, and that is why you have the white smokers. All right. So, but I'm going to send you a video uh, on a, on a, the tube room and how it survives in this uh, environment. So please uh, watch the next video watch the next video and then get enough information on this thank you so much and god bless you